Hey guys, what's going on? It's your boy, Dead Gremlin. Today, I wanted to do a video all about inking, so I have a pencil drawing over here that I did for fun. And I just want to show you guys my inking process and kind of talk about it while I'm inking and give you little tidbits of knowledge. So yeah, stick around, let's do it. It's gonna be fun, come on, like, it's a day. The sun is up, we're all alive, we're breathing. Hey, me and you, we're both alive and breathing, so let's enjoy it, come on. Okay, so here I am at my desk. This is where a lot of the magic happens. I don't think it's an understatement to say that what I make is magic, okay? So yeah, I'm over here and I'm gonna be inking this drawing. It's in pencil form, so it's a little light on the camera. But that's what's satisfying about the inking. You're taking uh, a pencil drawing and you're bringing it to life. That's what I love about inking. Honestly, it's so satisfying to take a pencil drawing and there's something about it where it just feels a little bit far away and it just feels like it hasn't reached its full potential. It's like you're taking regular old Super Saiyan 3 Goku, right? And you're leveling it up to Ultra Instinct Goku. That's what inking is, is Ultra, ultra Instinct. You feel it and you're like, oh, this is what the drawing was supposed to be. And then, you know, you give it a few days and like me, then I'll look at it again and I'm like, oh, this isn't as good as I remember. Because there's always that moment while you're inking where you're like, but you'll do like one line and you're like, oh man, this is the, this is the best drawing I've ever done. And then when you're done, you're like, wow. And then you give it a couple days and you're like, oh, this looks completely different. So yeah, I'm gonna show you some of the tools that I use. So I like to use this brush. It's a refillable Pentel brush. You can get this at most art stores. But yeah, I use this one a lot. I used to use the dip brush when I was first starting because I heard everyone uses a dip brush. All the big artists use one. I tried it and it was a little daunting and I'm better at it now. I could do a dip brush for sure. Like when this dries up, I, it turns into a dip brush. If, if there's no more ink in the cartridge, then I just dip it and use it like a normal dip brush. But I use this for like really thick lines and filling in blacks on the page and stuff like that. For most of my inking like lines, I use this pen. Pigma Fine, uh, the fine version of, of that. Asakura Japan Pigma FB. And I use that for um, all the outlines of characters and stuff like that. I also will mix it up. I used to use these a lot, the Kurataki uh, brush pen, the little pocket brush pen. I used to use these a lot and I still do when this one's not working uh, for me. If I feel like I'm using one too much and it gets stale, I'll switch. And then I use Microns. And also with Microns with like, uh, multi-liner pens, I'll switch it up whenever I'm just feeling kind of bored with a certain tool, I'll switch to a different tool. So like, I'll use Faber-Castells, but Microns are the cheapest, so I use those the most. Alright, so enough jib jab, and let's just get into it, you know? Yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, let's do it. Yeah, so here we jump in uh, to inking. So, uh, don't worry everyone, my hat, uh, I, I fixed my mistake a few minutes in and I flip my hat around so it won't be distracting you. Um, luckily it didn't block most of the drawing. Um, so yeah, so I have the pencil drawing of the cyberpunk guy and I'm jumping in with the uh, Pigma fine tip pen which I usually do. I usually do most of the drawing with that. Like the, typically I'll tackle outlines with that but um, if I'm feeling super confident I'll just go in with the details with it as well. Um, a big thing about inking is really just becoming confident with the tools that you have. So initially my plan is I'll do outlines with this thick pen and then with the micron I'll do the details but over the years I've just gotten more and more confident to where I, I feel like I've got a, a steadier hand and I can do thinner more detailed lines with the thick black brush. Um, so I'll give you some tips that I learned when I was starting inking that I wish people had told me. So um, uh, when I was inking, I just thought, oh, I need just need to make the outlines darker and the um, the details lighter. And so I didn't think about line weights. I was just thinking about how um, dark the outlines and how thick the outlines were. So a lot of my early drawings, the outlines were way too thick and they were all very uniform and it kind of gives a lifeless, unprofessional looking drawing. Um, the key to remember is when inking, think about your light source. So in your head, just create a light source. For me, on this uh, character, I think it was the top left was the light source because there's like a neon sign behind him. So in my head, I'm just like, oh, that's the light. So always have a conscious uh, light source that you feel like you're inking from. And what you do, um, 
simply put just ink darker away from the light and ink lighter closer to the light so on the left side of his head I would lightly ink and then as I got down to the bottom of his chin where it's um, farther away from the light and like you know in my head I'm imagining a cast shadow under his chin that's where I would I would uh, do a thicker line under his chin so like if I'm starting from the top of say his arm and I'm going down his arm I will start thinner at the top and then darker by the bottom and if I do that consistently throughout the whole drawing it just gives um, a much more dynamic looking um, piece and if you start that way by thinking about light source and inking around a, an invisible light source that you've created it, you will immediately get better results I know when I started inking um, I read a book and I can't remember what it is but it was a, um, a classic inking book that someone would recommend you I want to say it was a Will Eisner inking book but I don't I don't know what it was but I found it online and I read it and as soon as he said that like ink with a light source in mind it changed everything like it was a solid trick to making my inking better like I really thought there was no um, hack so to say you know so to um, so to speak or whatever um, and I just had to ink and ink and ink and ink until I was better at it and I had to figure it out myself which is mo which is most of it so um, inking is a lot of trial and error and figuring out what works for you and making little mistakes and then realizing that it wasn't a mistake that's actually a cool technique and then using that and um, that's a lot of inking but the simple trick of ink with a light source in mind changed everything and it made it way more simpler to tackle a drawing um, and then, you know, once the practice and you, you've drawn a lot, then you don't have to follow that rule so much. So, like, a lot of parts of this character are, don't follow that rule. So there will be thicker lines towards the inking, or towards the light, and then they get thinner away from the light. And that's just um, how I'm feeling in the moment and how I think a certain line should look. And once you're good enough, um, that's when you can start having fun and just messing around with the rules that you've created in your head. But if you're really struggling with inking like I was just you know use that technique and now I'm going in with the micron doing the finer details like my hatching and uh, his stubble because uh, you can't have a badass mercenary type without loads and loads of stubble and now we're going into the background um, a lot of uh, you know straight edge ruler uh, for this so it's not as interesting you know um, the same techniques apply though um, when I'm doing like these uh, electrical boxes behind him I'm thinking about the light source so typically I would do it lighter at the top and darker at the bottom but I think what I like to do on um, environments is I actually like to do the reverse so do thicker at the top lighter at the bottom especially when I'm doing buildings because in my head I'm thinking oh as you get closer to the ground with a building the um, atmospheric perspective or the I guess the pollution from a city would dissipate the lines and make it harder to see the bottom of a building as opposed to the top which I think is actually reversed I think it's harder to see the top but I think it just gives it a dynamic uh, look to a building um, but I love drawing wires and tubes and pipes and all that stuff so like this was just kind of a fun uh, excuse to get to do that um, I was like, I want to draw a cyborg guy who has tons of wires in his in his body, uh, just so I get to uh, ink all that and show you guys all the juicy details. Because um, again, it is something satisfying about taking a pencil drawing and it's light and it feels like it's uh, not quite finished, and then you pop everything out with the inks, and then you're you discover the true drawing underneath. That's why it's interesting when I see a lot of artists who just do pencils and then darken their pencils and that's all they do and that's awesome that they can do that and um, because you don't actually need to ink anymore it was a process done in the olden days of comics where you had to ink so that the uh, printer would actually be able to print a an image that you could see and nowadays we have Photoshop and all this uh, digital age and we can just darken pencils and it's just as good but there's just something about inking that um, I feel like a drawing loses that dynamic 
quality when it's just a, a loose pencil drawing. Now some people are great at it, like Jerome Pena and Isad Rubich, I think both um, just pencil and darken it. And Kenneth Roker for it, I think, does that too. He might ink, I'm not sure. But I just love inking. I don't think I could ever not ink um, my own drawings. Um, yeah, doing super fast lines over that. Look at that determination. Um, those beads of sweat. Um, but yeah, so um, if you guys have any other specific um, advice that you need for inking, I know inking is so tough to get good at and to get a handle on, and it feels incredibly frustrating when you're first trying to do it. Like you get a handle on penciling. Everyone, every artist I know has this phase where all their drawings are in pencil and they just can't move into the inks because they are intimidated and I have that. I have sketchbooks and sketchbooks from college that are just pencils and now I can't imagine doing a drawing and not finishing it with inks. Like, I don't think I've done a pencil drawing by itself just for fun in forever. Um, but yeah, then I ink that window in and the inking's all done. And then for this drawing, I just felt like, oh, I have this like... 1980s aesthetic uh, in mind for this, which will just be two colors, so I'm just going to color it up real quick. So um, that's it for the inking. Um, I'm also going to do a coloring video for anybody in the future of me coloring pages, uh, so you guys can see that process. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any specific things that you really want to know about inking, let me know and I will make another inking video. I'll make inking the, the sequel, I'll make a video inking to Requiem for you guys, or uh, inking to Reloaded. They need more sequels with the subtitle Reloaded, I feel like that's an underused subtitle. Um, but yeah, just colored them in, giving them a cool Miami's. It, it gives me that Alexis Zerit Night Hunters vibe. Go check out Night Hunters comic book that's uh, that's been out. I think they're on issue two. It's really good. Um, oh, and also my Kickstarter is up. So if you guys uh, haven't seen it, my Kickstarter for Blood Force Trauma issue three is up right now. So uh, it's already funded. So it's for sure coming out. But this it's basically just a pre-order now. So go get the new issue. Um, and if you miss the first two issues, they're in there too. Um, but yeah, this should pretty much be it. Um, just coloring these up, switching the colors to get that right combination that I like. Um, and that's what I ended up going with. And then I, for a second, I thought, oh, I'm going to give them, go over the lines and give it like a red tinge to it. But I think I end up just going back to black, uh, lines and I'm like, oh, that looks better. Cause it does. Inking is just the, the black the pop of the black lines is just so um, satisfying so and then a lot of saving and then there you go and that is my drawing all done and I hope you like this video and I will see you guys next time